And I want to announce the next speaker of the day. Our uh, next speech will be openly developing open infrastructure by Thierry Cares. It will be in English. Thierry Cares is the vice president of engineering at the OpenStack Foundation in charge of the long-term health of the open source project under the foundation. A long-time elected member of the OpenStack Technical Committee, he has been a release manager for the OpenStack project since its inception, coordinating the effort and facilitating the collaboration between contributors. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Thierry Cares from OpenStack Foundation. Thank you, Hussein. Um, so my name is Thierry Carrez, and uh, I'll uh, speak to you about openly developing open infrastructure today. So maybe we can uh, start the slides. And uh, um, so hello, everyone. Thanks for having me here um, at this Open Infra Day. I wish I could be with you all in, in Turkey. Uh, that's unfortunately not possible right now. I was looking forward visiting your uh, great country. Um, and uh, today, in this in this opening keynote, I want to explore our mission as a community, uh, what happened in the first decade of OpenStack, and what we want to do for the next one. But first, our mission as a community. When people ask me what is our mission, I generally answer it's about openly developing open infrastructure. But there are multiple components in this sentence, openly developing open infrastructure. First, what do we mean by openly developing? Well, we built OpenStack following a basic set of principles, which we called the four opens. Those are a crisp set of principles that reflected how we wanted to openly collaborate between equals on a level playing field. First there is open source. Everything we do is open source, licensed under an open source initiative approved license. Uh, there is no provision for open core or for features reserved for proprietary products. Then there is open development. Everything happening in development should be transparent and accessible to everyone. Beyond that, we do open design. The design of the software should not be done behind closed doors. It should happen in the open, at our in-person events, or at our virtual events, and involve all our community, especially users. And finally, we have open community. The fact that our community is open to everyone, regardless of who their employer is, uh, the fact that anyone can rise to a leadership position in our communities. Uh, the fact that there is no reserved seats uh, for specific companies, the fact that individual contribution is the only valid currency in our community. So those are the four principles that drive how we collaborate. But in addition to that, uh, we believe in a few other things. Some say the fifth open is open minds, embracing diversity in all of its forms, um, geographic, gender, as a wealth of opinions and feedback that it really makes us stronger to welcome all those different opinions. Some say the fifth open is open operations. The fact that we believe that open collaboration should not be limited to the production of code, but also be applied to how we operate that code in production, trying to be more transparent, to share best practices between operators of the software. And we also believe that free software needs free tools, that we should use free and open source software as much as possible to build free and open source software. That relying on proprietary software services means that your software is not really free. And finally, we believe in the central role of quality assurance and continuous integration. Early in the life of OpenStack, we had this saying, that if software is not tested, it should be considered broken. Automated testing and continuous integration are not to be added as an afterthought. They are the cornerstone on which our projects are built. So those are the principles that drive how we collaborate. That is what we mean 
by openly developing. So now what do we mean by open infrastructure? Well, first, uh, we need to explain what we mean by infrastructure. What is considered infrastructure? When you talk about application delivery, uh, traditionally, you would represent applications like this, with uh, users on one side accessing applications on the other. But the way you deliver those applications has been evolving. 20 years ago, you would procure some physical hardware. And as an application deployer, you would install an operating system and your application on top of it. But then we started adding more layers. We added hardware virtualization, uh, abstracting the server you're deploying on from the physical hardware that runs it. Then we added another layer, cloud APIs, to allow to programmatically access those virtualized resources. So you have programmable infrastructure on one side and cloud native applications being deployed on top of that. More recently, we added a new layer, uh, application deployment APIs, which is basically what Kubernetes provides, higher level primitives to deploy complex applications on top of this infrastructure. So you're, you're getting the idea here. That there is this growing separate role of providing infrastructure for others to develop and deploy on. And that is where our focus is providing infrastructure for others to build and deploy applications on. We serve those infrastructure providers. We help the people who build and operate infrastructure. It can be public infrastructure, like for anyone around the world with a credit card, or it can be private infrastructure for the needs of a given organization. But the job is basically the same, and we help both. So that's what we mean by infrastructure, what we mean by serving infrastructure providers. Now, what is open infrastructure? Well, open infrastructure is infrastructure that is built on open source solutions. And opting for open source brings a number of critical benefits to the table. When it comes to providing infrastructure, open source software is not costly. You know, access to the source code is basically free as in beer. Um, as software eats the world and becomes ubiquitous, the old software pay to play, uh, pay to paper seed, sorry, um, models are getting less and less desirable because you have to pay for every single um, resource you end up using. So cost is really an important factor. Open source software is available. There is no barrier to trying out the software with all of its functionality. You can simply evaluate the software for future use, experiment with it, or just have fun with it. There is no friction going from that experimentation to production. Open source software is also sustainable. When an organization makes the choice of deploying software, it does not want to be left out without maintenance because the vendor uh, changes its mind or goes bust. The source code being available for anyone to modify means that you're not relying on a single vendor for long-term maintenance. Open source software creates an open job market. It makes it easier to identify and attract talent. Enterprises can easily identify potential recruits based on the open record of their contribution to the technology that they're interested in. Conversely, candidates can easily identify with the open source technologies that an organization is using. They can join a company with certainty that they will be able to capitalize on the software experience that they will grow there. Open source software is transparent. Uh, access to the source code means being able to look under the hood and understand by yourself how the software works or why it behaves the way it does. This transparency also allows you to efficiently audit the software for security vulnerabilities. Open source software is self-service. Um, the ability to take and modify the source code means you have the possibility to find and fix issues by yourself without even depending on a vendor. And finally, with open source, you have the possibility to engage in the community developing the software 
and to influence its future direction by contributing directly to it. It's, this really gives you the extra flexibility to adapt to future needs and make sure that the software grows the features that you will need tomorrow. All those benefits really explain why open source, including open infrastructure solutions, are so popular today. But beyond those benefits, open infrastructure really matters because open infrastructure enables everyone to have access to infrastructure providing technologies. We at the foundation think that all of the world infrastructure needs should not be provided by a handful of internet giants in China or the US. Uh, concentration of technology in the hands of a few companies located in a few countries is not good. Monopolies are not good for users. Monocultures are vulnerable. Data sovereignty is important. Open infrastructure enables everyone to build their own local interoperable solutions. And that's our mission. Openly developing open infrastructure. And we are 10 years into it. So what happened in that first decade? Um, back in 2010, when it all started, infrastructure was a proprietary software business. A business that was owned by VMware on the private infrastructure side and AWS on the public infrastructure side. OpenStack was built mostly in reaction to that, to provide a viable open source alternative. And so it was formed originally as a collaboration between Rackspace and NASA. Um, OpenStack, if you don't know what it is yet, uh, is just a cloud software framework, basically a bunch of APIs that lets you programmat programmatically access infrastructure. It started just with object storage and virtual machines. And its original goal was to fit the needs of public and private clouds alike, and to do it in open source under the Apache 2 license. Two months ago, we celebrated the 10 years of OpenStack. So we made a lot of progress since those humble beginnings. We did produce a full cloud framework supporting virtual machines, but also containers bare metal machines, networks, functions. It's supporting object storage, but also block storage or file systems. OpenStack is in the top three most actively developed open source project in the world, with 45,000 changes merged last year alone. OpenStack has been widely adopted across a range of industries, from retail to telcos, to manufacturing, to the scientific community. Uh, I'll just Take a few examples to illustrate. Uh, Walmart, which is the largest company in the world, runs uh, 750,000 cores of computing power to support its online retail operations using OpenStack. On the public cloud side, in Europe, we have OVH Cloud, which is a very large OpenStack public cloud uh, running 33 regions in eight different data centers across the globe about 300,000 instances and 200 petabytes of Swift storage. And that's just one of the public clouds running OpenStack. We have a global footprint of more than 70 OpenStack public cloud regions across the globe. And with data sovereignty concerns, more are being created every day. The largest deployment of OpenStack that we know of is at Verizon Media which runs around 4 million CPU cores on 300,000 physical servers. That's pretty huge. But my last but favorite example is uh, CERN, the European Center for Nuclear Research, uh, which runs a little above 300,000 CPU cores and a petabyte of uh, RAM to power 36,000 VMs and 445 Kubernetes clusters, all used to process the results of the Large Hadron Collider experiments. So that's where OpenStack is at 10. It's one of the top three most active open source projects in the world and still is today. It is software that runs in production everywhere and as infrastructure for all sorts of workloads. It is a community of practice, operators sharing at our various events their experience running it. It is a software factory 
software which we built to support the crazy velocity of OpenStack development. That is what the first decade of openly developing open infrastructure looked like. So what will the next decade bring? What should we expect? Well, we expect more open source. Open source is ubiquitous today. Uh, a study showed that the percentage of companies running open source software jumped from 39% in 2010 to 99% in 2019. Another study showed that the percentage of products comprised of more open source than proprietary code grew from 36% in 2018 to 70% in 2019. That means that open source is becoming the new default way of producing and consuming software. And this, this increase in open source usage is showing up in more and more diverse use cases, especially on the infrastructure side. We are seeing more open source being used in edge computing. It's almost impossible to do edge computing without open source to sustain the scale of the, the deployments required. We see more open source being used in containers infrastructure, combining the power of OpenStack for raw resources and of Kubernetes as the application orchestration layer. We see more open source used in providing infrastructure for artificial intelligence and machine learning workloads, which are becoming more and more prevalent every day. And Lower in the stack, we're seeing more open source being used to provide raw access to the internet via 4G or 5G mobile core network stacks. So the needs for open infrastructure clearly goes beyond OpenStack today. And we detected that trends early on, uh, which is why the OpenStack Foundation started to support projects beyond OpenStack. As those new use cases became more obvious, open source communities are forming to build the missing pieces. And those communities are eager to follow in the open development footsteps of OpenStack and get to the same level of success and adoption. We have Kata containers, a secure container runtime, combining the speed of containers and the isolation properties of virtual machines. We have Zool, a continuous integration system with advanced features like speculative gating or cross-project dependencies, which we originally built for our own needs of our software factory, but it is now being adopted as open source development infrastructure everywhere. We have Airship, a deployment tool to declaratively automate open infrastructure provisioning, as deployment is still a major challenge for operators. And finally, we have Starling X, an opinionated distribution of open source technologies, including OpenStack, tailored for edge and industrial use cases, which helps address the challenges at the edge. Those projects really point to a need for more collaboration. It's clear that in the next decade, there will be more and more open infrastructure technology pieces. And those technology pieces, those building blocks, may be supported by the OpenStack Foundation or by some other community, but you will still need to combine them, which means we will have to facilitate that integration, test that things work well together. And beyond that, we'll need to collaborate without boundaries between communities and not limit ourselves to the projects that we directly support. This will allow our community of open infrastructure operators, which combines technology pieces from all over to share their experience and best practices between peers in open events. So this is, in my opinion, what the next decade will bring us. Open infrastructure will be everywhere, we'll see more projects, more technology pieces, and we'll need to facilitate that integration. We'll need more sharing, more collaboration without boundaries. That all makes the OpenStack Foundation even more relevant for the next decade, even more necessary. Our next step 
is the Open Infrastructure Summit, which will happen virtually the week of October 19. We'll make significant announcements there. Uh, we'll introduce this next decade of open infrastructure. So I encourage strongly that you attend and register. It's it's a free event and it's really easy to, it will really be easy to, um, to visit it because you will be able to attend it virtually from home. Uh, but today, more immediately, Today is Inf Open Infra Day Turkey, uh, an event about sharing experiences, collaborating without boundaries, hearing about OpenStack, but also Ceph, Kubernetes, and others. And so I hope you will be having a great day at this event. And thank you again for uh, having me here. I want to thank Thierry for uh, his speech. And uh, if you have any questions to Thierry, you can uh, write on the chat boxes so we can forward uh, these questions to him. Any questions? Okay, I think uh, we don't have any question. So thank you very much, Thierry, for your presentation.